And so we thought one, you know, good way for our technology to become well, more well known was to uh, develop this Raspberry Pi, uh, you know, plug and play kit. Uh, and then, um, you know, get it, get it embedded into the Raspberry Pi uh, system. Welcome to Uptech Report. This is our Applied Tech series. Uptech Report is sponsored by TerraLeap. Learn how to leverage the power of video at TerraLeap.io. Today, I am joined by my guest, Mark Shade, who's based in Cupertino, California. He's the GM and business strategy manager at Vine Solutions, a wholly owned subsidiary of Vine Electronics in Japan. And that focus, uh, if I understand it, Mark, is, is Fabulous Semiconductor. That's a manufacturing company. You guys are really focused on image processing and high-speed image transmission, which we'll dig into more in a second. But Mark, I'm excited to have you on today. It's good to have you. Well, thank you, and it's very good to be here. Now. This is a little bit different topic because a lot of times we're actually uh, interviewing folks that are in the software side, but it, we've done a few folks and I'm excited to interview uh, content on the technology, the, the hardware side. And one of the more recent things that you guys have brought out is actually a, a, a solution for the Raspberry Pi. Basically, the, those who are engineers out there that, that understand the in and out, ins and outs of cameras and, and are finding new ways to utilize uh, high-speed transmission cameras uh, can basically get one of your kits and start to to use it. Uh, some of the places that you guys are using your kit, uh, your 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 actual equipment, the, the content you create is higher end surveillance, body cameras, medical scopes, machine vision, biometric devices. Did I get that right, Mark? That is that is correct. Those are our uh, target markets, uh, essentially all target markets with embedded camera systems. And those are the ones that we most focus on. Now, um, Thine Electronics in, in Japan has been around for 20, 20 years or how long? Uh, 30 been? years, actually, 30 since, years. Uh, yeah, since 92, actually, so almost 30 years. Okay, gotcha. And then when, when did you guys set up the subsidiary here in, in the United States? We set that up in 2018. 2018. So this, this subsidiary has been, um, you know, about three years. Very exciting. Okay. So now the idea for uh, one of the things that you have been rolling out just in this the subsidiary part is this Raspberry uh, Pi uh, solution, this kit that you have created that, that engineers, anyone can just go in and, and purchase. Can you describe it more uh, about this kit? Yeah. Yeah. This uh, this kit is a actually a plug and play uh, uh, solution. Uh, with everything included in it, uh, including hardware, cables, uh, everything you need to be able to uh, take a Raspberry Pi camera and locate it at a far distance from the Raspberry Pi uh, computer board. Because uh, uh, the way Raspberry Pi camera and computer board come is uh, the camera comes with about a 15 to 20 centimeter ribbon cable. And so when you hook up the camera to the board and then you have to hook up that board to the PC or to display and everything, everything is right next to each other. So for applications where you really don't want all the wires and all the uh, uh, display and all the uh, computer uh, you know, peripheral stuff. Yeah, components right, be right there the where camera, the camera is. Uh, you yeah. want to put the camera somewhere you know, at, a, at an edge of the system or something. And then you want to locate the computer board somewhere convenient. And for instance, a, uh, you know, one application is one of our engineers actually built a, um, a telescope system using res the Raspberry Pi uh, um, components. And uh, it was in Chicago in the, in the winter. And so when he put the uh, telescope and the camera system for the telescope outside, uh, you know, it, it, he didn't really want to sit outside with his computer and his Raspberry Pi com computer board uh, in the snow. And so he was able to put the telescope on his patio in the snow, run a cable inside to his nice warm house, and then view what was on the telescope inside the house. So it was able to, uh, and, and, and essentially it, it really plugs in very nice plug and play. There's no software updates. There's no, nothing you need to do. You just need to, yeah, that's, uh, that's always nice. Make all the connections and, uh, and then just run the cable from the, uh, from, from our, from the cable board, from the camera side to the computer and you're good to go. 
Mark, I feel like we're getting into a world where the, the, the need for develop, uh, integration of cameras uh, on, on IoT and end, end devices is just becoming more everyday, more normal. And for those more um, creative engineers that are trying to find new ways to use it, there's current limitations to, to the technology as far as the transmission of high quality video and, and transmission speed. Can you just describe a bit more about the, 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 the issue that, that a lot of engineers may, may face when they're trying to integrate them cameras of just the overall, okay, why can't the cable, just normal cable that's included be, be longer and why would they need a solution like yours? Right, uh, well, the, the, there's a typical standard called MIPI uh, that, uh, that the camera outputs the uh, video data to and uh, sends it to the computer. And, it's, and, and these, this MIPI has typically uh, two or four lanes and there's a, um, it's probably transmitting at uh, a, a gigabit of uh, data per lane. So like four gigabits of data in order to get real time uh, video with no latency. Mm -hmm. So that kind of uh, data uh, amount over a long distance will eventually uh, not have the signal strength to get to the computer. So if you have a very short a cable, which is what this MIPI is capable of, uh, it works fine. But in order to get like a 20 meter distance or something longer, uh, what our technology actually does is we have a, uh, a standard that we've developed at nine called V by one high speed. And what it does is it takes the uh, MIPI signal and it actually serializes it uh, in, a, in a different format and then sends this serialized signal uh, over a long cable, which we could then, you know, do like uh, four, you know, essentially four uh, gigabits of full data and send it like, for instance, in the Raspberry Pi case over a 20 meter cable. Mm -hmm. And then we deserialize it at the other end turn it back into the MIPI, original MIPI signal, and then send it to the computer. So the computer doesn't even realize that, you know, that it, that it was there's something anything there. in between. Now, it, it, would that be considered transcoding or, 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 or compressing uh, the image? No, actually, we don't do any compressing because a lot of times when you do compressing, uh, you start having uh, latency type uh, uh, issues. And, uh, and for video, you know, you want to see things real time. You know, mm -hmm. as it happens, you don't want any, uh, you know, any delays or anything like right. that. So our, our technology actually does not uh, do any compression. It takes the full uh, data amount mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, serializes it, sends it over a long cable, deserializes it, turns it back into the way it was exactly with no compression. So th this this episode obviously a little bit more more on the more technical side for those out there that uh, are curious about business solutions. Hopefully you can see the business application here. But for the our more engineering minded folks that are listening in, I'm also curious, uh, and, and maybe I, I I am I'm naive in this space. But when I think of solutions like uh, HDMI to like Ethernet options, is that is that a similar concept where it's just transcoding into a different uh, format or data type, or is this is that just a completely separate realm? No, it's, it's, it's similar. It's similar. There's all kinds of different formats. You know, HDMI is one of them. Uh, MIPI, MIPI, which we call is a different one. A lot of camera systems use this MIPI interface, whereas TVs and various things like that use uh, a converts it to like a HN, HDMI type signals. And the benefit in this case is, is it, you probably just need other types of processing in order to get it out to HDMI so that you can run longer cable versus coming right off of an integrated circuit board or, or a, a, a Raspberry Pi. It just naturally is in that MIPI format versus something else. Do I have yeah, that correct? Camera systems are, you know, it's, it's a, HDMI is a different format as mm -hmm. MIPI, MIPI is a different format. And typically cameras use uh, um, the this MIPI format. And... Um, you know, HDMI is, a, of course, in commercial and TVs and everything is very standard. And there's many long right. cables that uh, that have, uh, you know, that are compatible with uh, HDMI type uh, uh, systems. But for the, the future of what you guys are, are, are working on, so you got this one kit. for Actually, for some the of that, just, uh, you know, add a little bit. Some of the yeah. uh, to the displays inside the TV, uh, that was actually when... Uh, Thine in Japan was founded and we developed this uh, V by one high speed technology 
to transmit uh, high-speed video over a very small amount of cables. Uh, inside the TV, uh, when the video is uh, generated to the display of the TV, uh, V by one is a very uh, popular standard. Almost all TV manufacturers use it. So they've all uh, licensed Dyn's V by one uh, high speed uh, um, technology. technology. That's, and they I actually remember you use it. Almost all TVs have our technology in them, and we're not well known outside of that particular you realm. You're, 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 what, what I find fascinating is, is companies that exist like, 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 like you guys, uh, Thine Electronics, where you've created a, a technology that is embedded inside something we all know, but no one really knows these tiny uh, pieces that make it possible to make the, uh, the high speed technology inside a TV actually happen. But it's there and it's been around. Was that, when did that technology come out? Was that when Thine uh, Electronics began 30 years ago? Right. When we began, that, that was the uh, technology that launched Dyn. We buy one uh, into uh, kind of uh, TV manufacturers, uh, mainly in, in Asia. And in that particular area, you know, um, uh, Thine is well known. And now you guys are, are working on, on translating this underlying core technology in different ways of, of uh, flows. Well, that and we extended the technology to include uh, image processing as well as image trans transmission. Okay. So now we're trying to become more of a global company. And that's what where when we launched Dyn Solutions in Silicon Valley, that was the objective of Dyn Solutions to actually become more global and extend uh, into not just video transmission, but uh, video processing. Mark, what's your what's your background? Uh, my background is uh, I'm a, a MS uh, electronic engineer. Uh, so you've uh, always been like fascinated I, with with this. So this I've always technology. been. I, I started out in hardware engineering, made, uh, mainly radio frequency. Worked in the defense industry for many years and uh, ultimately evolved to the marketing side uh, mm -hmm. probably about 20 years ago. Gotcha. So, but uh, was essentially a hardware engineer uh, in radio frequency systems uh, for half of my career and then, you know, or a little less than half and then moved on to the marketing side. It, this this opportunity of what you guys have brought out with the, the Raspberry Kit solution, I'm always fascinated for, for when, when engineers can get their hands on on being able to test and play with things, what are you most excited about? What's coming up that you can share on the roadmap of, of what you guys are bringing forth? Well, this is very exciting. And this is one of our strategies to become more well-known because Re Raspberry Pi is, uh, is you know, there's just a ton of hobbyists, engineering hobbyists who have, you know, uh, day jobs doing uh, real engineering and, uh, and their uh, hobbies include doing some of these projects on Raspberry Pi, and sometimes Raspberry Pi gets used in industrial type uh, applications. So we thought one you know, good way for our technology to become well, more well known was to uh, develop this Raspberry Pi uh, you know, plug and play kit, uh, and then um, you know, get it, get it embedded into the Raspberry Pi uh, system and uh, our user system where we become more well known and then extend that not just the Raspberry Pi users, but uh, you know, our plans are to extend this type of a uh, kit solution to maybe uh, Jetson uh, users and other uh, single board computer type uh, uh, users. And then, so that's, that's very exciting for us uh, as far as where we're gonna extend this kit. Plus we're actually, um, you know, improving the kit. We have some, uh, some cost reduction uh, plans uh, to, uh, to actually uh, make the kit even uh, lower cost than it is today. And what's, in addition, uh, I'm sorry. What's the cost right now? If somebody wants to just go ahead and, and get one. It's of in the uh, ballpark of the low, uh, you know, like uh, 50 to $55 range. Yeah. So very, very affordable. And it, you know, it comes in a nice uh, box with everything and ESD packages, all the boards, all the hardwares, the cables. So pretty much you just hook the boards to the cables of the Raspberry Pi camera to the Raspberry Pi computer, and then put a long cable in between it. And you're good, you're, you're, you're essentially without, you know, you could have your camera next to the Raspberry Pi system. Everything works fine. And the system has no idea that this long cable is in between. So it's uh, so that's kind of pretty cool.
Uh, and then uh, in, in addition to that, what we're also coming out with is other kits that involve our uh, signal processing side of things, where we're coming out with uh, camera reference uh, boards that uh, that have very high resolution outputs that could be um, and different versions of those boards. Like the first one that we're just launching, which is probably a couple of weeks away, is a um, UVC class uh, camera board, which means it works off of a USB type connectors. So you have a little uh, um, 35 by 35 millimeter board, three inches by three inches or something like that. And you hook on a USB connector uh, from, from our board to a PC. And through the USB connection, you could uh, control uh, different resolutions and things like this. And the uh, idea is that eventually, you know, in our target markets, we talked about uh, before, like body cameras, surveillance, uh, med uh, medical scope, and endoscope applications, they could take this reference design, which has a fully processed video, uh, and is very high speed. It's, it uses typically 13 megabit uh, sensors, which is a uh, you know really high end lot of data for a camera system. So you can get very good uh, image definition. And through our processors, you could control systems like, you know, uh, you can fix the lighting, fix the exposure, you could customize uh, things, the focus, this particular thing comes with one, what's called a uh, phase detected uh, autofocus, which is way faster than a lot of the other uh, autofocus techniques that, that do before. So there's a lot of good features. And, you know, the key is the, the 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 the, process, the single processing that we use in in that board, right? To be able to, to transmit. So what what I'm intrigued is is kind of this future that we're heading towards of machine visioning, where we're giving the world around uh, the computers around us the ability to see the world around us more and more. So finding innovative solutions, um, for engineers everywhere are like, how how can I add a camera here, a camera here, to be able to get more signal coming in. Uh, I'm excited to, to see the new solutions that come out. And then you have companies like you that are enabling that technology and the future. So thank you so, yeah. Mark, for, so much. Actually, for one more thing. In addition yeah. to the machine vision, I, I do want to mention that another really exciting market coming is uh, augmented reality type uh, market mm -hmm. with the glasses and things like that. And I, I do want to mention that our, uh, our, our products are also uh, um, very, very uh, targeted for uh, that type of, uh, of a system. Now that, you know, hasn't really exploded yet, uh, AR and those type of things. But I think in, you know, next five to 10 years, that's going to be huge. So, uh, you know, that's another pretty exciting market uh, for, for embedded camera type uh, systems. Yes. I mean, we're going to, we're going to have embedded cameras everywhere and the need for that high speed quality is only high speed quality um, uh, video feed coming in from everywhere. It's only going to increase. So um, you're helping pave the way for the underlying technology behind it. So thank you so much again, Mark, for, for the time, just to spend a few minutes with us. Um, for those that want to learn more, uh, you can go over to uh, Thine Solutions. So that's T-H-I-N-E solutions.com be able to grab yourself one of these kits and start playing around with it and uh, if you want to also see this full episode and a lot more episodes go to uptechreport.com thank you so much and we'll see you on the next episode have you seen a company using ai machine learning or other technology to transform the way we live work and do business go to uptechreport.com and let us know mm -hmm.